good morning. I hope everybody has their coffee. I don't know about you, but I'm very nervous, very excited, and ready to share something that I have not really shared with anybody. So I'm going to hop right into it and go outside my comfort zone today. So I grew up going to church every Sunday for Sunday school, but had to leave after saying hello and singing worship due to soccer. That was just the nature of the beast. However, I went to a Wednesday uh, youth group pretty much every Wednesday. I loved youth group um, because I, it was a close bond that I had with everybody that was there. We all played the same sports. We were all the same age. And I mean, to be frank, bonus, the boys were cute too, so that wasn't too bad either. But as I went into high school, and then after high school, I went into the workforce. Church um, was put on the back burner. Honestly, everything got put on the back burner. And it was not something I was forced to do because I was an adult. Um, my mom wasn't forcing me to go, um, which props to mom for making me go to church. Um, but honestly, it was out of sight, out of mind type of thing. So I didn't go. And... I believed, but I didn't certainly did not practice anything that the Bible states. And fast forward it 10 years and wow, that's like honestly a little bit insane to think like it's, I've been out of school for over 10 years now, which is crazy. Um, but I use a journal that makes you, and I'm very much a believer in vision. I have massive visions for my life, for our legacy that we're leaving behind, um, and what I want to make an impact on this world, not only in my family, but also on other families. And in this journal, and I will get the journal before the end of this, in this journal, you have to score categories of your life and whatever you score the lowest in those should be the categories that should be your ultimate focus because those categories help catapult the other categories too that you're high in so the one area that I always score very low in it was either a zero or a one was spirituality which means different things for different people however I always took it as my faith and I knew when I saw that in my own handwriting that I needed to make a change because I knew ultimately it was affecting other aspects of my life however I still didn't go to church um next 90 days rolls around because I do goals in 90 day increments I redo my key priorities those key areas those same key areas and the same score falls in spirituality because I didn't work on it and everything still remained the same um pretty crazy so let's then I didn't change anything at that point then the next 90 days rolls around and my spirituality was at the same score that it was Insanity, right? And I've heard insanity because I was in the automotive industry for a very long time. And the thing about insanity is continuing to do the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And I was literally, and my stepkid will kill me for that one, literally, because she hates that word, but I was that. I was the definition of insanity. At this point, I was already in the process of relocating again. <laughs> Um, one more time, and I decided to go to church service in the new state that I was in. And that church service um, was during Christmas. So I was like, okay, this is going to be awesome. Like, I always love church at Christmas back home because you have the candles and everybody's just really happy and it's family oriented. But something in my gut was just not feeling it. I didn't feel connected. I didn't feel like that was my calling that was my purpose 
and thank you for hopping on. I do appreciate it because this is very uh, hard for me to talk about because it is outside my comfort zone. Um, I knew in my heart and in my gut that I needed to reconnect. I needed to regroup um, with my faith. Uh, I, pur- I purchased um, a Bible that sits in my office. Has not been touched since that day. <laughs> since I purchased it. Since I got it from Amazon. Um, actually, no. I actually went to a store and bought that one. It just sits there. And I... Now it's summertime. And I haven't been to church in six months at this point. So the whole year has gone. And no Bible. No music. No podcast. No nothing. That relates to reconnecting with my faith. So now my little one is here and her and her family back in Charleston are very faith-based people and she loves, 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 loves church and so does her brother. And she knows a lot about faith. She speaks a lot about faith and boy does she preach it to us, to everyone in school, everyone around her, everybody in our house. And she really does school us on the Bible, which is truly inspiring to have a young girl believe and make an impact in that type of way. So she, we live about three blocks away from a very large church in our community. She asked if she could go to that church on a Wednesday night for their youth group. Um, They call it Switch Here, which I think is a really cool um, name to, to use. And, um, she asked if she could go and I said, obviously, of course. And, uh, the one thing for me is I'm all about them making new friends when they come to visit us so that it feels like home here too, because this is their home too. And I'm all about making a positive environment for them and then being able to connect with people of different cultures and ethnicities and ages and all those types of things like I think that our environment is a really positive things for our children so her brother was really nervous to go and obviously because it's new but when I came to pick them up her brother went too they had smiles from ear to ear like crazy the first thing they asked as soon as they got in the car was Ashley can we go to church on Saturday or Sunday the real church service, as she calls it. Without hesitation, I said, of course, because I practice what I preach. So if I'm making my kids do things, I have to be willing to do things that I'm uncomfortable with too. So I said, of course. And we talked about it throughout the whole night at dinner, what they learned at church, what it was like. Like They were so ecstatic. So our church has seven services ranging from Saturday to Monday. Saturday roll around. I made sure I had my jeans ready because, you know, I'm always in activewear and hats. I set my alarm for the church service so we can make sure we got good seats. And parking is always crazy there. So I wanted to make sure I got a parking spot because this girl can't parallel park. So I needed a pooling spot. (laughs) So I was thinking ahead. Um, I had already ordered as of Wednesday, so thank God for Amazon Prime, right? I had ordered Bible coloring books, which I can put the link below the books that we have, to make learning and growing and being taught something new that's out of my element fun for me. And during the week, um, after we had learned, I decided that, you know, we could take what we are learning in church and reapply it and really connect with what the Bible is saying and what that pastor was saying. So I was super nervous walking inside of church and I don't know why I just was. I couldn't, but I couldn't really be because as soon as you hit the pavement, everybody is waving at you, smiling at you, saying hello, how are you? It just puts you at ease, I guess, um, making you feel welcome. And that is empowering just in itself. So the kids are showing me everything as soon as we walk in the door. They take me by kids club, which they don't go to kids club. So I don't know why they took me there, but they took me to kids club. They took me to where the popcorn is, 
where the car inside because it was a music theme week and they've reconstructed the whole entire auditorium to look like Indiana Jones which was super super cool um they got me my decaf coffee because they're awesome kids they got their popcorn they got everything like like they knew like they had been going to this church for forever they were pretty funny actually um so as everyone says hello I'm processing everything I'm taking it all in the kids are rushing me everywhere possible to show me everything because they were super super stoked um my nerves were completely gone at that point like I was just really excited to be planet there to see what it was all about and to see why there are so many cars in the parking lot from Saturday to Monday night like like I said they have seven different services so their parking lot is always packed I ride by it constantly because it's on the way to the grocery store to Whole Foods. So the auditorium opens, officially opens. Everyone says hello to us as we're walking in. And then we go to our seats and I sit in the back because I just feel more comfortable in the back. I'm an introvert. So I like sitting in the back. Um, and we sit down in our seats. And the first song they sing is like my favorite song at this moment of time, from The Greatest Showman. And I'm a singing person. I love to sing. I love to lip sing. It was like a major, and I'm also the type of person where I am a sign person. So I felt like I was, it was a sign for me to be there. Um, I embraced the song. I love the song. I sang the song. I just felt right. So, of course, I sang it on the top of my lungs, right? (laughs) The kids laugh at me because they know I can't sing, and that's okay because I laugh at myself too about it. And as we go into the next few songs, I love them all. They're very high-intensity, vibrant, fun. Everybody's singing. Everybody's loving being there. The kids are jamming out and having a blast. Um, It was almost like they had gone to this church their whole life. And watching them experience, literally seeing them experience this was truly amazing, was life changing. So as we head into the service, and I'm not going to cry, as we head into the service, I feel very, very relaxed. But at the same exact time, what we were learning about that day was something that I personally needed to hear. So like I said, It was called um, Movie Week. So the whole month of July, we were watching a new movie and taking that movie and applying it to what the Bible says. And boy, was it a good one. So for me, I'm an active person. I love to run. I One of my goals in life is to run the Boston Marathon with my team. And this movie was based on the Boston Marathon bombing, but from a different viewpoint, not from the Mark Wahlberg movie that we all probably see and love. This was from a man who had lost both of his legs during the bombing, and it had destroyed his everything for him. Um, and he had choices to make, and we all have choices to make in life, and we've all had very, very hard chapters in our life to probably get through. And not really understanding why we're being put through those things at that moment in time. And it's not until years and years and years down the road that we've realized this is why we were we had to have that happen. So unfortunately, in his story, and it it is a true story, um, he decided to take a different approach. He decided to feel alone even though he wasn't alone he had an other half he had family he went in a very negative direction of using alcohol to cover up the stress and the hurt and the pain that he was in um but when he had lost everything and I'm not just talking about his legs but when he had lost his other half because she was just physically emotionally checked out from what he was constantly doing to himself he wouldn't fight for himself I guess you could say something in him made him switch and 
he realized that he wasn't alone, that he actually had a ton of support and help from everyone around him, from the doctors to get his prosthetics to um, fighting for to see his other half to um, his family fighting for him to go get another to go get a job like it didn't happen to him it literally happened for him and from that one decision he was able to make massive massive life changes in his life this one particular church service changed everything for me well, technically, the little one was already pulling me towards all that stuff out of me. But I realized that I needed to really, truly reconnect with my faith. I needed to understand because I tr- truly didn't. I needed to stay connected. I needed to learn. I needed to grow. And I needed to reflect. And, and I also needed to take action. So this is me taking action by going live and sharing. But... The one thing that I've learned, it's not about going to church. Like, hey, I go to church. It's really about being planted. So we watched church service from our uh, computers. Um, I listen to leadership podcasts from my phone. Um, The kids and I listen to music in our car. It's not all about our faith, but it's about learning and being planted in his word not just going to church and say, hey, we go to church. Like we're, I'm not, I don't want to do that again. I truly want to understand what it is and I want to apply the different life experiences that I have gone through and will continue to go through back into God's word because I know that a lot of the craziness that's happened to us in the last 10 years, I know for me specifically, um, is because more than likely because I didn't have that back that was there that I needed to have there so I think this was God's way of telling my soon-to-be stepkids in December that I needed to reconnect and thankfully for them they pulled that out of me so hands up to them right she's an amazing amazing kid and she actually and because Like I said, I'm one of those people that is all about positive environment. She even created a business this summer and I've put her through all steps, all 12 weeks of a class that I have taken myself. She's gone through every single one of those steps herself and she's 12, like 12 years old and it is summertime. And most kids, when I know when I was her age, like I went to be outside swimming, playing soccer and all those things. She created a faith-based business of t-shirts that we go to pick up today for her and she wants to inspire the 20th century to make God cool again for them like that is so flipping cool like she she wants to take what she learns in church service because even though she is back in Charleston on Monday we can still watch them together thank gosh for a technology we can still watch these sessions together these uh bible plans together And she is taking those words that our pastor states and she's reapplying it to her life and what kids her age are going through. And she's sharing that on her community that she is building um, around to make an impact and a difference in other people's lives and to create a safe net community because most kids her age feel like they don't have anybody to talk to. She's been there herself and that is inspiring and that is making a difference in our lives and her life and to watch her do that is just but I wanted to share because you will see a shift in a lot of things because as I'm learning I will be sharing because that's what I do um but I feel like I'm called to do this I know as crazy as that 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 sounds um But this is something that is truly important to me because I know I need to make a difference. And I think this is, I don't think, I know that this is the difference that I need to make. So thank you for watching. I truly do appreciate it. Um, It means a lot to me that you are here. Have a great Wednesday.